Welcome back, Aluxers. Today we're talking about something your parents and grandparents have probably always taken for granted. The idea that you work until you're in your 60s, and then once you hit a magic age that varies from country to country, suddenly you get to sit back and spend your time sipping cocktails, traveling, or doing whatever your heart desires without having to worry about that four-letter word you spent the last few decades doing work. Of course, we're talking about retirement, but it looks like pretty soon it might not be an option anymore. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. We realize not all of you spend that much time thinking so far ahead, especially when you've got so much exciting stuff to do on the way there. But you should be aware that if you were born after 1980, the chances of you enjoying a carefree retirement are getting slimmer. And the sooner you get used to this reality, the better prepared for it you'll be. But we promise this video won't be all doom and gloom and be sure to stick with us right to the end because as effed up as the situation is, we'll also be talking about how you can fix this and make it work for you. Number one, life expectancy is going up. Let's start off with the math behind this. People around the world are living longer thanks to medical advances. In fact, since 1900, average life expectancy has doubled, and it's still going up, and the average lifespan is currently 72 years old. So, what's not to like about that? Well, it is amazing, no doubt about it. But like so many good things in life, whether it be impulse purchases, cake or tequila shots, it comes hand in hand with some less desirable consequences. In this case, a higher percentage of people in the world who are of retirement age. That's more people for the world's social security systems to look after, and those systems will get stretched until they just can't look after everyone any longer. Number two, fertility rates are going down. To put it real simply, people are having fewer babies. But Alux, isn't the world's population going up? Well, globally, yes, but it depends on where in the world we are talking about. In richer countries, births are going down, and that means an even older population. In the USA and the UK, for every four people working, there is one retiree. In France and Germany, that's three to one, and in Japan, it's two to one. And in all of these countries, those numbers are slowly but surely heading toward one on one. That's a one person working to one person retired. Given enough time, this is going to happen everywhere. China's population is expected to peak and start going down in the next few years, whereas in India, it's projected around the middle of this century. Number three pension systems around the world will collapse. Put the first two points together and what do you get? Having more old people and fewer young people can only mean one of two things. Either higher taxes, yep, we all know how popular that one is, or not being able to support people in their old age. And while taxes might still go up, the second one of these looks like the inevitable outcome. For government retirement plans all over the world, it's a matter of when, not if. In the USA, some estimates put the collapse of the pension system in 2037. Number four, skyrocketing cost of living. So if pensions aren't working, what if you save up and put some money aside for retirement instead? Well, of course, that's a good idea, but for a lot of millennials, that's not very easy. And the main culprit is the rising cost of living. The cost of housing has been going up and up, and the same goes for transport and food, and paying for all that technology that modern life just doesn't work without. According to a study by Deloitte, the average millennial has a net worth that's 34% lower than people of the same age 25 years ago, and that makes saving for retirement a lot harder than it was for previous generations. All indications are this trend is going to continue and make it even worse for Gen Zers. Number five, millennials have less invested than older generations. Less savings also translates into less money to invest and less financial security later in life. In fact, millennials have around half the number of assets invested that baby boomers had when they were the same age. It may be tougher than ever to put money together into investments, but if you're smart about it and get yourself educated on the topic, it is not impossible. For a few tips, start by checking out our video, 15 Basic Money Skills Everyone Should Know. And if you want to go deeper into it, one book that really helped us figure it out is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. 
he talks you through the thinking behind creating long-term wealth. And to get away from just looking at it in terms of income and expenses, but to focus on assets like property, stocks, and intellectual property. Here at Alux, we strongly recommend you pick up a copy. Better still, why not get it from those fine folks at Audible? We partnered with them, and if it's your first time signing up, they have an offer special for our community. Click on the link alux.com slash freebook, and you'll get a copy of Rich Dad, Poor Dad for free. And you can start learning the basics of how to create wealth that will last all yourself. Number six, college debt. Something else to blame for the rising cost of living. Millennials may be the most educated generation ever, but the flip side of the coin is they also have the highest student debt ever. True, it varies from country to country, and it's really not bad in places like Finland and Denmark where college education is free. But in the USA, the average student will rack up $30,000 in student loan debt by the time they graduate. And for some of them, it's a lot more than that. And if you have to spend the first decade or more of your working life to pay off loans, investing money for the future is not that easy. But there is a solution, however it does depend on your specific circumstances. That solution is to skip college. It's not for everybody, especially not if you plan on becoming a doctor or lawyer, which you do need degrees for. But the fact is, for many other career paths, college degrees are becoming less and less relevant in the workplace, especially when there are so many other options out there when it comes to educating yourself, like micro-credentials, learning on the job, or a combination of the two. Why get yourself into that much debt for something you just don't really need? Number 7. Short-Term Planning of Governments There's no doubt about it, government retirement plans for the future are hugely underfunded, and it is no easy fix. But it's not helped by the fact that governments do have a bias towards short-term thinking. Politicians often talk about solving problems for retirees now, or for people who are about to retire, because there's a pressing concern. But it isn't often you hear them talking about planning ahead for people who are going to retire 30, 40, or 50 years down the line. That's partly because young people have more immediate issues, and partly because the fix isn't an easy one. Yep, everybody's favorite higher taxes. But adding on to that, there is an inherent problem in the way the system works. You know, the fact there isn't much incentive for politicians to solve problems they're not going to be credited for for 30 years. With this in mind, fixing it seems less and less likely. Number 8. The Fallout from the 2008 Financial Crisis it happened over a decade ago, but we're still facing the consequences of it. For years, it's given us a cash-strapped tax system, with taxes being put into getting the economy going again, dealing with the unemployment it caused, and not having enough left for pensions, as well as lower interest rates over the last decade. All of this means lower returns on investments, and even more bad news for retirement funds. And we're definitely not out of the woods on this one, not even close. That's because, number nine, the pandemic just made it even worse, a lot worse. Recovery from this is going to take a long time, and that means all the problems we just mentioned with the financial crisis, we can all just repeat them over again. Governments having to support businesses from collapse, as well as supporting the hundreds of thousands of people around the world who've become unemployed, and the medical systems too. With all of these on the cards, pensions aren't a top priority for a while to come. Number 10. Mismanagement of Retirement Funds This one's another result of the financial crisis. Remember we mentioned lower interest rates, which governments used across the world to get the economy back into shape? And how do they spell bad news for investments? A lot of those fund managers of pension plans have turned to riskier investments in the hopes of higher returns if they get it right. But if they get it wrong, that's even more bad news for pensions. Number 11. Wage stagnation. One more hangover of the train wreck that was the financial crisis. The cost of living may have been going up and up, but wages haven't kept up with it, and adjusting for inflation, millennials earn an average of 20% less than young adults a generation ago. The solution for this one? Don't rely solely on your employer's wages. Like more and more people are doing, start a side hustle and see where it goes. Earning more and more on the side will help you escape the trap of wages that aren't moving in line with inflation. You'll have more money to invest. And if you can turn it into a successful full-time business, even better still. Number 12. Medical care is getting harder and harder to cover. 
there is no way around it. As you get older, looking after your health is going to become more and more a priority. And unless your country has an excellent public health care system that's free of charge, you're going to have to pay for medical insurance, which is also getting more expensive. And if you haven't got another source of income when you're older, like a private pension or other investments, another reason you're going to have to keep on working will be to pay for those insurance premiums. Number 13. Governments are raising the age of retirement. What's the fix for a population that's getting older and tax systems that are getting more and more strapped for cash? You know, apart from raising taxes. The other option is to raise the age of retirement. And guess what? Governments around the world are already doing the second one. As time goes on, retirement ages everywhere are likely to creep up and up. For people who graduated in the last five years, retirement won't come until they're 75. Number 14. Millennials and Gen Zers are less likely to own a home. Previous generations bought homes, and by the time they were of retirement age, they'd paid it all off and could sit comfortably knowing they owned the roof over their head. With millennials, it's more and more difficult to get onto the property market. On top of all the other problems like the rising cost of living and stagnant wages, the average price of a home has gone up 55% since the 1950s. That's adjusted for inflation. The result? Young adults have the lowest home ownership rates ever, which means that more and more young people will still be paying rent into old age. And if that's you, you're going to need an income to pay for the roof over your head, and with no government pension, you guessed it. Another reason you'll need to keep on working. Number 15. Higher Expectations from Life The fact is, we grew up and entered adulthood with a bar set high and high hopes of what to expect from life. And a lot of the time, higher expectations than generations before us had. Not just for material goods, though, probably more so for experiences. Whether it's travel, extreme sports, or an active social life filled with variety, the fact is we're used to having great experiences that we turn into great memories, and most of them cost money. Your 60s might seem far into the future, but once you've gotten used to excitement in your life, you're not going to want to give up on it. And for that, you'll need money. A solution? Don't give up on things you really love, but do prioritize. It's easy to end up spending money on things that don't bring us much value. Whether it's things we rarely use or things we do that aren't really that rewarding. Focus on spending money on things that you really want out of life. And be clear on what those things are. And when it comes to things that don't bring you value, don't waste your money on them. Yes, we're saying be more careful about how you spend your money. And for a few tips, check out our video, The 15 Biggest Wastes of Money. And when it comes to the money that you've saved, invest it instead and put that money toward looking after your future. So Aluxers, as always, we'd love to hear your ideas. How do you think you'll face this challenge? Tell us in the comments. Now, since you stuck with us until the end, here's that bonus. Millennials might actually be less likely to want to retire. There's no way around it. The solution doesn't look good, but there could be just a silver lining to all of this, and it requires a shift in perspective. One positive development that's been happening at the same time is that more and more millennials are following their passions and learning how to make a living from them. Or even when it's not a passion, at least making money from something you enjoy that makes you feel fulfilled. And this could be the key. Maybe you won't be able to retire until later than your parents or grandparents, if you're able to retire at all. But don't do what your grandparents probably did and maybe even your parents too. Don't see retirement as delayed gratification for all those years of sticking with a job that made you miserable. Instead, do something you love, because if you do something you love for a living, we know it might seem idealist, but the reality is a lot of us will have to stay working well into old age, so let's make a point of doing something we actually like. It might not be fair, but so many things in life aren't. Just take a look at our video, 15 Unfair Things in Life and How to Overcome Them. The point is, when it's unfair, you've got to overcome it. Put your energy into making it work for you, not into complaining about it, which won't fix anything. As the meme goes, when life gives you lemons, make some lemonade. The retirement crisis that's ahead of us all might be a big challenge, but as with other challenges, turn it into a way of finding new opportunities. 
We hope you enjoyed this video, Aluxers, and better still, got some inspiration from it. If you did, be sure to click on that bell for more quality content from Alux every single day.